This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Then everything goes to hell. I mean, we, I think we've been in hell for a while in this VN. Human beings are most vulnerable in moments of celebration. Growing up in a house where a thoughtless smile on my face could earn me a punch in the jaw- WOW! Okay, so he had a really, really abusive childhood. I figured that, that much out before I even graduated from elementary school. Probably because of that, I've always been pretty cautious about making my real feelings too obvious to others. Makes sense. And by the same token, I'm aware of associating carelessness with danger more strongly than most people. I make a conscious effort to stay alert, if not tense, at all times. Okay, well, the title of that VN alone would make me think many times before I wanted to play it. <laughs> but just as I've been reminded, true carelessness is something that sneaks up on you. The nastiest surprises always come when you don't even realize you've let down your guard. Jerked involuntarily out of a light sleep, I hear harsh, gasping breathing nearby. It doesn't take long for me to realize that it's Sachi. I instantly reach over and shake her trembling body. Sachi. Wake up, Sachi. When I call her name, her eyes slide open quickly enough. Sachi. And a few moments later, she responds in a sluggish voice. A voice tinged with genuine exhaustion rather than a typical morning lethargy. This has become a familiar pattern lately. Another bad dream? That was my point of carelessness. Sachi's nightmares. The first night I spent sharing a bed with Sachi became the first morning I saw her groaning in her sleep. Hardly a problem in itself, but since then she's been having these nightmares practically every day. And with each passing morning, her suffering seems to be growing worse. With her squirming finally... When her squirming finally grows strong enough to rouse me, I quickly reach over and shake her awake. Recently, this has become almost routine. Sachi closes her eyes and waits motionlessly for her breathing to grow calm. Is your throat dry? Need something to drink? <laughs> Slowly sliding off the bed onto her feet, she makes her way d directly to my bathroom. This clear exhaustion after the fact is a recent development. At first, she'd quickly return to normal, so energetic and cheerful that I'd all but forget about her tossing and turning. Because of that, I was slow to pick up on the fact that something was seriously wrong. But recently, her poor sleep has begun to take its toll. In the last two days, she's been noticeably absent-minded and inattentive, frequently spacing out at random moments. Sachi returns from the bathroom a few minutes later, looking slightly more awake. Can you remember what the dream was about today? I bet she lying to us. I see. This response is familiar as well. Sachi's aware of the nightmares, but so far she hasn't been able to remember the specific details after waking up. Yeah, but... Sachi. Alright. When Sachi's like this, the world's longest lever couldn't budge her. Trying to push the issue wouldn't be productive. Reluctantly, I leave my room and head out for my run. I know I like to run on the roof, too. Nightmares, huh? Alone on the rooftop of the dorm, I mutter the word to myself. Sachi's gone out shopping for daily necessities. Finding myself with a little free time on my hands, I wandered up here to think things over. Mental exhaustion is a hell of a lot harder to deal with than the physical kind. Doesn't always show on the face. Sachi told me she was quite alright, and it didn't look like she was consciously telling a lie. But that just means the girl isn't fully aware of what these nightmares are doing to her. If anything, that makes the situation all the more troublesome. I need to take action quickly. Bad dreams occur more often when there is something weighing on your mind. The constant barrage suggests, suggests Sachi is deeply troubled by something on a subconscious level. To resolve this cleanly, I need to identify the specific cause of those nightmares. But given that she can't provide me with any information on their content, I don't have any clues to work off. I'm not sure where to begin. Hmm. I'm just gonna pretend I didn't hear that. The hell? 
rudely pulled out of my ruminations, I turned toward the unexpected interloper. Makina is standing a few feet away with me, with a poop-eating smirk on her face. Yeah, synchronization rate approximately 2%. Astounding, in a way. Well, what are you doing up here? She's gonna dub anime? That a fact. I'm going to guess that she means navel gazing. Not really, just thinking about something. You are so weird. Definitely a point of curiosity, but no. What makes you think that? Hmm. After arriving at the school, I've been thoroughly reminded that a woman's intuition can't be underestimated. Since I've run into something of a dead end here, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea to try relying on that natural female perceptiveness. Makita, my friend, I have a favor to ask of you as a woman. See, why, why is this always, always the first thing that they think of? This is not normal. Sorry to ruin this spectacular fantasy, but I'm not looking for anything like that with you. Not even close. Okay, no matter how desperate I might be, turning to Makina for advice might have been a little rash. But then again, she's the same age as Sachi, and the two of them are very close. Sachi might spend more time with Michiru, but her relationship with Makina is more of a straightforward friendship. In other words, there's a decent chance the girl has the information I need. Alright, Makina, allow me to rephrase that. I have a favor to ask of you as Sachi's best friend. I need you to answer a serious question. Has Sachi talked to you about having nightmares recently? No, at any point since she's transferred in. Anything come to mind? Even just dreams in general. Try to remember. We need to ask Piglet about that. Piglet knows how to go into people's dreams. Have you ever seen her groaning or thrashing around in her sleep, then? Didn't you see that happen at the hospital when you visited her, though? I see. What? You remember something? Okay, she does remember. Good. Did she say anything in her sleep? Oh, dang, you got a good memory, Makina. I see. Apparently my concern is pretty transparent. Makina peers up into my face with an anxious expression. She's just been having a lot of bad dreams lately, so I wanted to gather any information I could. It's nothing you need to worry about. Yeah. Leave it to me. I drop a hand onto Makina's head and ruffle her hair around a little in my usual way. Oh yeah, she does have the pet crawfish. I forgot about that. That was ages ago. Her expression returning to a reassured smile, Makina shows me the jumble of coins in her hand, then trots back inside the dormitory. I'm sorry and mommy daddy, huh? I had my suspicions, but those keywords make it pretty clear. The dreams have to be connected to the accident that occurred on her birthday. Sachi decisively stated that she still loves her parents, despite their cold attitude toward her near the end. I'd taken that to mean that Sachi had reached some sort of a personal closure over what happened, but apparently that was wishful thinking on my part. 
And if Sachi's memories of the past are the cause of her current suffering, JB's executive summary isn't going to be enough. I'm going to need more detailed information about what happened back then. <laughs> I wondered where you were hiding, Arthur. Oh, it's Chizuru. Figured I could just keep saying it until you lose the energy to complain. Wow, bro. Anyway, sounds like you were looking for me. What do you need? Funny how that happens. Grumbling pointlessly in her usual manner, Chizuru takes out a thick envelope from under her arm and offers it to me. What's this? What's this? Ooh! A delivery? What, from Ichigaya? <laughs> yeah, you can, you can read! I silently accept the envelope and look for the sender's name in the corner of the label. Darkness may already have won the fabulous million dollar prize. <laughs> Komuna Akihiro. Komuna, is this? <laughs> How convenient! <laughs> Why would Sachi's uncle send me a package? What's in this vein? A message? Sends a package to someone he's never met, and now he wants a phone call too? I don't get it. Well, you're dating his daughter. She probably wrote all of the stuff we've been doing in the letter, and he's now gonna beat us up. As he should. No, I never went to Sachi's house. Didn't even meet her parents, let alone her uncle. <laughs> yeah. In the first place, how does this man even know I exist? Sachi wrote him a letter! Oh, wait, that's right. I do have an idea what this might be about. <laughs> oh, did he send the spring-loaded pie to us? <laughs> yeah, Sachi just recently sent her family a letter about how things are going. Said she was mentioning me. Will he get his own sprite? That's how you know if he's important or not. Hmm. Maybe. But even if he knows who I am from the letter, I don't understand why he'd suddenly send a package directly to me. If Sachi told him a little more about what she, little more than she should have, there's always the possibility he might be looking to give me a stern parental talking to. In any case, since I'm currently in need of a detailed information regarding Sachi's past, this is a convenient coincidence. Funny how that happened. All right, yeah, I'll give him a call. Call him before you open the spring-loaded pie. From the look of this number, he's not in the Tokyo area. Back in my own room, I look over the scrap of paper Chizuru handed me, <laughs> cell phone in hand. It took her so long to write that <laughs> those numbers down that it's already sunset. Whatever the contents of the envelope may be, it's clear that Sachi's uncle has something he wants to tell me. No reason to think too hard. I'll know once we talk. After one final attempt at persuading myself, I enter the number from Chizuru's note on my private cell phone. Wow, it's only three or four numbers. <laughs> When the, oh, he has a voice, though. When the call connects, I hear the voice of a seemingly mild-mannered middle-aged old man on the other end of the line. Am I speaking with Komune Akihiro-san? Yes, I apologize for not introducing myself. Yes. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> I appreciate your understanding. Oh, it was just an envelope. I thought he sent us a package. It's gonna be a very tiny spring loaded <laughs> Have you opened the package yet? Oh, no, what's in it? You have to open it. Also, open it from this direction. Okay. <laughs> no, I, th I think it might be best to hear what you have to say first. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> As instructed, I rip open the thick envelope Principal Tachibana handed me on the rooftop. Inside, I find a single metal key, weathered of age. 
This would seem to be... <laughs> open the, go over here and open this shed. And you will... I promise you will not get splatted with a pie. Yes, that's correct. Ooh, are we getting their old workshop? The workshop? This is strange. I understand what you're saying, sir, but why would you give this to me? I'd appreciate some clarification, yes. Shocked? あ。Yeah, I don't think you want to know what she was doing. そして中を見てみれば私たちが驚くようなことがたくさん書いてあった。<笑><笑> No, no, no. If, if you're splatting someone with a pie, it's got to be, like, banana cream or something with a lot of cream so that it gets messy and gets all over your face. That's how it works. You don't say. <laughs> I mean, I was the only guy at school, so... I see. So that's how you learned about me. <laughs> I did notice something like that. By the way, we blew up a school. Bye. Yeah, we know we, we know how that happened. Yes. And Principal. No, I only gave her the opportunity to realize something about herself. If the Sachi you knew was changed, Ahikahira san, it's entirely the result of her own efforts. In that case, don't open the shed. <laughs> As I said, you really don't owe me any thanks. Okay, Sachi's uncle is the best male character, and Principal is the best female character. You're very kind, sir. Is that so? Yeah, that was kind of hammered into our head. Yes, she's told me that much herself. Oh, whoops, I forgot to say that. Their house had no lock, the workshop did. I have to agree, yes. Typically, people keep their most frequently used keys together on a single ring. And since her parents had left the house presumably planning to bring their daughter back home, grabbing the key to their workshop doesn't really make sense. Oof! Dramatic irony. Your jaw drop. Hmm. Are you saying you haven't entered the workshop yourself since that accident?
What was inside? <laughs> it was a pie that splatted my face! I've definitely not rigged it again. <laughs> you know, you just have to experience it yourself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Have I t Has Sachi told you that her favorite kind of pie is banana cream? Yes, from what she's told me, the family business was featured on television. Things became very busy, and they stopped paying much attention to her. I swear, if this route ends with him actually getting splatted with the pie, that would be, like, the perfect way to end it. Is that so? ようしんからも一番甘やかされて育ったんだ。だから自分にも子供ができたら、うんと甘やかしてやるんだって。そう言っていてね。実際あの子のためにのうきを遅らせたり、仕事をキャンセルしたりするのはしょっちゅうだった